Welcome back to the channel. Absolutely knackered, just walked up this hillside here. Whew. Before we get detected, I just want to show you a product here that I picked up. It's a heated, let's take this off. It's a heated vest. Now, we used to, we used to laugh on, uh, on site about these heated vests, saying that these kids nowadays, you know, they're soft. A couple of weeks later, I bought one. <laughs> The good for just say you're out and it's chilly, uh, cold nights, and you end up putting loads of layers on. But as you're warming up, you've got to take them layers off, and then you've got to put them somewhere, haven't you, in your bag. They're about £45, the range. There's loads, there's loads on there. I'll put the link of this one in the description. So there's an inside pocket with a USB. So you just put your power bank in. So here, red is the highest setting. Then green, mid, blue, low. So that's the front of the jacket. That's the neck. So you can have them at different settings as well. High, low, medium, high. And that's the back. So if you have it, if you have it zipped up, you can feel it a lot more on the front because it's open, you don't really feel it. And if you have it zipped up and have your color like that, you can really feel the heat. So obviously the higher you have it, I think it's four hours on maximum eight hours on medium and then 11 hours on the blue but the thing is if it's really cold as you're warming up you can just turn it down so i've got it set on green for everything until i start digging and then because it is a bit chilly up here and then i'll just probably end up on blue and then turn it off if you're detecting in the cold weather it's it's something that every detectorist should have and that's coming from me that was saying, oh, it's the softies and all that lot, but it's just, it's just nice. It's, it's horrible being cold, isn't it? So anyway, that's that. I'm out on the uh, Charles II threepence we had last time. I come on here uh, quite a while ago now, and I've had a big silver flooring, George V flooring. I've had a gold ring off here. Uh, so I've got a small coil on, legend, and all this is normally overgrown. And it's all flat. It's all it's all died back. And this nine nine and a half b six coil will do great on this kind of terrain. I don't know what to think about this one. It's got a strange tone, like a wobble. Sounds warped. What are you saying? Non ferrous. With a bit of ferrous there. Strange that. I think it's going to be trash. And it does seem that it's under a rock. Just under this tree. Just at the side there. I've moved it. Yeah, trash. I can. Sounded like it as well. See how that's come up there. Oh no, it's a half crown. Would you believe it? Missed the 50% silver by one year. That would have been a nice find that from the second signal under this tree. I've had to go far and could you hear the difference between the, the two targets, which were quite similar conductivity. One just sounded horrible. Now, as you know, this channel isn't just about pulling history out of the ground. It's about the performance of detectors as well. It was giving a 30s this way and a 40s that way. I've got my IF set at 4.2. 4 IF, 2 stability. Iron that way. And I think it's false in that way.
Now, it's not the biggest piece of iron, but there was iron in there with it. As we rotated, it was causing a little bit of, it was pulling the target down a bit. The true idea of that kind was probably 40s, and we was getting 40 on one plane, on one angle, and then when we was going across the iron and the coin, it was bringing it down to the 30s. Not the hardest of targets, as the coin is quite, as a lot larger than the iron. Uh, but it was to one side, and it was a little bit lower, even if the plane of the iron is on top, because below, it's still both items under the coil, which is still masking. We're at the edge of this wall, as people could have jumped over and stuff fallen out the pockets. The electrical coil is a lot better than a round coil because that six inches across, so the blade, the detection blade on that coil is down the center. So I'm three inches from that wall. If an 11 inch coil, round coil, or a nine inch round coil, it'll be four inches away from, unless you go head on, unless the blade's head on, but the blade goes like this. So you're losing depth at the tip and on the back end, the deepest part of the coil is the center. So if you go in there, if you go in like that, you're not getting as deep as if, if you go like this, because it is actually further away. The center of that coil is further away because it's a nine inch coil that'll be four inches away. That's three inches away. So with the 11 inch, you're, you're uh, five and a half inches away, whichever way you swing it. So I do prefer electrical coils anyway. That's one of the good points about the electrical coils to be able to get that blade of detection closer to places of interest. This wall is a place of interest. Plus there's trees as well, so people might have sat under here for shelter uh, on the wall to have a picnic and look at the views. It's always worth, while you're here, it sets in. Let's put the coil sets in the walls as things could have fallen down into the wall also especially under a tree a marker uh, somebody back in the day yeah I've put that stash of coins we robbed uh, or jewelry or whatnot stashed it under that tree in the wall uh, so yeah we know where it is and we can all go back to it when we need it. We can't keep it on us because obviously people are looking for these jewels that have been taken without permission. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, will you rob me? You know, unless it's an insurance job. There is a target here and it's, it's an aluminium can. That you can just say you can hear it in the audio. I'm not gonna bother with it. It's not a bad day today, to be honest. It's not too windy. I've got my jacket on blue on the lowest setting. I don't even know why I've got it on to be honest. We'll turn it off in a minute. Now, if something was stashed, are you saying that the people that stashed it got arrested or wasn't able to go back, had a bad illness as such, and passed away, and then left there for someone to find it? Like us, with metal detectors. So the dog tag. These are the sweet sounding signals we're after. Sounds lovely, that. Now, it rang up the same conductivity, 45, as aluminium. The big difference is that it didn't sound like aluminium. Nothing like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's still a kind, though, isn't it? And it's not trash. Uh, and you could tell that in the audio. 1P had a very faint 52. The idea was no good really, there was no depth coming up. As I've dug down at the bottom of this nine inch hole, some clay pipe. This sounded dreadful, it was coming up 33 and on the ferris, 
meter. That's the actual imprint. If we could see anything on that, it might be a button. On the ferris indicator, it was 50-50. But as you know, that's just telling you what's under the coil. So it's a coin. And there's probably iron in there as well. So for them people that only use a screen, as in like a like the ferrule check on the legend, if there's iron under that coil with a non-ferrous target, ferrule check is going to show you what's the amount of ferrous and non-ferrous under that target. So if a non-ferrous target that normally reads up about 36, this is a bronze uh, bronze coin, uh, Edward the Seventh, and iron, it's going to show you and it's going to average out the number as well. So. I, I do see people saying, I'll just go off ferrule check, it's brilliant. I found silver in the ground, which has come up with three bars on the non-ferrous. Three bars on the ferrous and half the bars on the non-ferrous. And that's just proved that as well. It was 50, it was 50-50. There's iron in that hole as well, but it was a coin. And it could have been gold, it could have been silver, but it wasn't, it was bronze. Very loud, 47, could well be a buckle. 10 inches down this now. Oh, it could be a big, huge piece of lead. Probably used on that wall, which is an inclined wall, a drying wall. It's actually listed that. So any anything heavy would have held the wool down. I'm hoping for a decent wool weight. Uh, this is a place it, it could be. Uh, so I'm starting to grid out this area. This looks like a kite and it says there it's quite loud. Where's it gone? There it is. The colour of that. It's got to be a Vicky that. No. 1907 it's another Edward. That half penny was an Edward as well. Got a bad patina on it that one. Yeah, he reigned from, I think it was 1900s to 1910. 1901, that. Sorry, 1907. It is a mighty little coil. Uh, most of these have been nine inch or more. Them two Edwards were around nine inches deep. Now, I favour electrical coils, all sizes, over the round coil because there's so much in the ground nowadays. The electrical, you might lose a bit of depth, but you don't lose the coverage. But then you've got the advantage of distinguishing between targets and getting between higher. I thought it was deeper than that. It is, it sounds lovely. Can it be silver? It's not that, is it? What is that? It's encrusted. Oh, it's a bloody button. Yeah, my luck, it's a bloody button, 1800s. So I'm gonna call it at that. I've dug loads of targets, loads of lead, big piece, pieces of lead near this uh, rock formation, which is a drying wall. It's actually straight on one side and it's at an angle on the other and the sun rises and sets. So they had all day near enough to dry out the sheep wool. Uh, I'm just getting big blobs of lead, you know? So yeah, I'm gonna call it a day because I've got another channel as well. I'll put the uh, channel in the description. The 303 uh, subscribers. The channel was for everything but detecting, but I'm doing, I've just got myself an old Royal Mail um, Peugeot expert, and I'm in process of doing a van conversion. And this is gonna overlap. So I keep everything metal detecting on this channel 
but what's involved is I'm doing the conversion so I can tour the UK and tour Europe. I'm going on a metal detecting road trip uh, for like three weeks, a month at a time. Uh, the first will be this summer. So the metal detecting will stay on this channel, but everything else like the van build and going from places and seeing the sites will be on the other channel. Because uh, I want to keep a dedicated metal detecting channel and then I do a lot of messing about with cars and tinkering about with stuff and reviews. Metal detecting reviews will be on here, but like the the mics and I did, I got I got my daughter a car, a remote control car, so I did like an unboxing and test on that. So yeah, I'll put it in the description along with a jacket and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.